Thank you, Your Worship. <laughs> One of the most important subjects in the Victoria Big Pepper's shut down twice yet in today. Amazing. I took an oath. I'm actually taking it ten times, so I'm getting used to what it says. And it says I will use my skill and judgment, and I'll act impartial. But also I have a function in this council to do due diligence and homework. First lesson I ever learned from council when the mayor actually struck, called struck. I also acknowledge my other two mayors here today. I did tear so many strips off it. It's I have come to this in an open mind and looked at these two two proposals. That's what we got. We looked at, we asked for a proposal, we've got it down to two. So I thought I'd better do some homework. And what do I, and the options I had. Also, there's the question of it ticked off so many boxes. I can't compare finances. Capital expenditure, Hanavasa versus the other one, Hanavasa one. Best capital expenditure, operating costs, Hanavasa one. Have a guarantee for 10 years, other one, $900,000 operating cost per year. Education. Hundred bars for one. Schools, primary schools, intermediate schools, high schools have all written to us saying they want hundred bars. They have not said that to any other or other art museums in whatever any other proposals. Maori support. Tienga, the the uh, culture centre down there, and Maori have still support from hundred bars, not to the other. So therefore, hundred bars for one. They are lost. Economic growth. This one has potential of protecting up to 450,000 extra people a year. And I thought, oh, that's a big figure. A little bit of homework to find out that Hanavasa in the toilets of Kalaka tracked well over 200 something thousand people come. Oh, perhaps they might be right. Though. Do a little bit of homework how many other museums attract that sort of figure. I can get 40,000 at the very good art gallery at the uh, St. Uh, Sergeant Gallery in Wanganui. The gallery at Napier, similar figures. Lesser figures at Brewster, all those sets. And so we have the Deloitte's report, peer review. And you say, well, I'm not an expert, but these guys are international firms. They therefore must have some knowledge. When I looked through the report, it seemed had logic to me. So therefore, this had up to potential 450,000 people coming, 160,000 through the door itself. Much better economic growth. I still decided then in the last few, few weeks to go to Kawaka in the weekend. In 19, 2000, the town was dead when it lost its hospital, lost its district regional council, uh, district council, county council, lost its miniature works depot. It was dead like a lot of other towns around New Zealand. I went up there these last few weekends, Saturday and Sunday. Shops are open at four o'clock on Sunday afternoon. One council said, here, but don't get any customers." Well, they were pretty dumb, pretty dumb shopkeepers. Not very good business people. They're open with no shop customers coming. They obviously are. And so what makes that so much more viable than it was? I then had to put it down to Hunterbuck. I went there last Sunday, 12 o'clock, streets are full, no parking. At least I had a motorbike to park. I'm a front So I came to the conclusion, Hunterbuck had more attraction pull and had the point of difference. Hunterbuck are one over the other. I then started looking at the polls and public opinion and thought, well, I guess there have been a lot of people against it. And the polls and the long-term plan and the annual plans and all this other telephone poll. So I thought I'd better analyze them all. So I went through every submission that we received. Thousands of them. 
many of the submissions were on based on it was costing this council too much money. Solution sold, someone else is funding it. So therefore, have they got an objection anymore? The other one was, we looked at, and there's not many times that I've been in politics that I've gone to rallies or protest meetings where they actually want something, where they're normally asking for something what council's doing wrong. I went on Sunday at a meeting of a thousand people, 1,300 submissions, 3,000 people saying yes on a website campaign, sent to us. You have to say, has the public says yes, that if it's funded by private enterprise, private private funded, the 10 million, that will we get the same results? I don't think so. Our last annual plan, we had 26 for, 13 against. The 26 represented 3,000 people, but we took that as only 26. The 13 against represented around about 200 people. We took that as 13. Look at the depth of what those things are. So I have come to the conclusion that yes, I have to use my skill and judgment and my impartiality, that the public have indicated that we set those things criteria, funding, ownership, those sorts of things, Set it up right, they will be performed. That is my skill of judgment. And that is why I come to the conclusion that the Hunter Barsa has to be the one that we chose. What else do we do? What other thing, 15 years of this building sitting there, what do we do? 21 proposals, no much different from what we've had before in the last 15 years from four different mayors. They're all asked for, all of them and none of them are standing up in an economic term and that is why we have turned them all down. So at the end of the day, Hunter Bates had to win in my skill and judgment and that is what I've judged my opinion on. Thank you, Councillor Dean. I just wanted to speak to this part of the meeting but I will. Um, you appointed me, Your Worship, as the financial chair for this council, responsibility for the finance, and I removed my name from the notice of motion because I thought that was poor process. And unfortunately, I have to say, I also think that this alternative recommendation is very poor process. <laughs> As financial chair, I've been hit with, goodness only knows how many million dollars of extra expenditure proposing to go into a long-term plan, which all of council is well aware we've been struggling with how to address the various issues that our community have, have asked for, along with keeping the rates affordable and the debt down. To suddenly be hit with a recommendation like this, with this amount of finance required, right now, I haven't been forewarned after having spent two days last week trying to come up with a recommendation that we could have collectively supported I'm gobsmacked is the only word I can think of to have been suddenly hit with this. So I'll call you now. Well, firstly, again, I want to thank all the people who made a submission and who put their plan forward. There were some brilliant ideas, and I um, see merit in the harbour side and the AMP and the elements from both of those that they could be combined and come back to us in the fullness of time. There's still a lot of work to be done around that. I don't look in my role as putting brick roads to stop things happening. I like to think that I work with people to enable things to happen. And in the six years that I have been a councillor, my Senate now, I have seen plenty of projects proceed because the people that were at the coalface believed they could make it happen. I believe more than ever we can make both of these happen. If, if after the investigation around the Harborside and AMP, the figures come out and stack up, they can both happen. Why are we, why do we or why do we continually put um, obstacles in front of ourselves? We have got this amazing opportunity where our 
community want to drive a project. <coughs> they are putting in, or want to find 75% of the funding. We've got an opportunity to have something of a mix, mana, standing, um, iconic, and I know that word iconic gets banded around, but it is in fact true. We are going to have an iconic building because of the person who, I, I understand, did it on a scrap of paper, but because it's going to be, the philo his philosophy is going to be adhered to in the build, we're going to have, we're going to have a standout feature in New Zealand like no other. Just talking about the Hanavasa and the and his original artworks being housed in there. But then we go to the other dimension of this build, and for me, just as important, just as significant, because I live in the northern region, and I love my connection with my with with Maori, and I think contemporary Maori art gallery showcasing the very best of Maori artworks. What better place should it be be put but in here in Northland, where we already have a significant number of artists, either who've passed on or who are still here, that are top contemporary artists. Then I think Pihiawa. And I know that there have been many discussions with the Pihiawa Trust and how the Hanifasa Waiawa Māori uh, Gallery can, how these two can work together. And they can, because in one you're going to have traditional Māori art, and learners and beginners taking part there, and at the other end of the peninsula, you're going to have um, artists who have reached the top of the game and who will be able to meet mentor. To me, this is a gift. What well, order of worship that the Māori art gallery is not specific to the It can be, a, it can be in the building, regardless of the Mundipasa. Regardless of that, we have got. It's not a precondition of the We have got an ama amazing opportunity on all fronts. Now I look at this and I think about community buying, community driving it, community building it, and underwrite for 10 years. Tell me, please tell me, councillors, of any projects you have been involved in. Councillor Hawks, you've been here a number of years. Councillor Christie, I need to know if we've ever had such an offer. Tell me about any other facility where the community want to take ownership, they want to drive it, they want to deliver a product that is of outstanding quality, that is going to engage almost across the board all ages of our, our, of, of our community aquatic, and all sectors. The aquatic sea centre for Councillors. So that's fine. But this is, is, to me, is also, we've talked about economic driver. If you were to look and, and go back on surveys and ask questions, what is the number one thing that people would want in their district? And, and unresoundingly, it is employment. They want a job. They say, fine, I will do anything. Give me a job. Now, I have just been part of a fast track for jobs where there were 72 candidates. We worked with MSD and council, and there were 13 employers, and they all wanted a job. Unfortunately, there were probably about 20. So if this is a catalyst for so many other things to happen, does that not say jobs? Jobs, more people involved in working, and more people staying here. I would like to think that my children, your children, all of our children have a future here, and that they have an ongoing, sustainable job. Just before, how many minutes? I've done. Oh, done? I'm supporting.
projects we've promised the community already, they've got to go out. All those in favour of the recommendations, please raise your hands. Councillors Morgan, Williamson, Herman, Christie, Innes, who worship the Mayor. Those against? Councillors Bell, Deeming, Bretherton, McLaughlin, Martin, Glenn, Holt, and Cutler. I can do the next. The motion is lost. Councillor McLaughlin. Thank you, Worship. Um, we have a motion to like, I've got some copies here, have you got some going on here? I'll wait for them, I'll give it out. Yeah, I'll give it
good due process get to a point where we have the right outcome? Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Councillor Dawkins. Other councillors wish to speak to us. Okay, just following on it, as you know, I would have preferred to make a photo of the 29th of October. I was quite prepared to make a photo. I don't like the situation we've got in, but I will support this motion because at least we keep everything alive as we said we would in honour of the words we gave to our public. The previous motion was just so badly done. The word terminated the hunter rustle. Terminated. Came from your mayor. A really bad recommendation. It's back on, and Councillor McLaughlin said to the people decide. Well, I think that's a statement we've got ourselves into. I was first on council when, before we started building the town basic buildings. That area was reserved for our rate cars as a passive recreation area. In that plan, way back then, the Here We Are point was reserved for Here We Are Conference Centre. Now, that culture centre is taking second place, our own people is taking second place to the Hunter Rifle project. And I have been saying for some time, let's address the new our culture centre as they were signaled 25 years ago that we would look after them. And yet that's been put in second place. When the town base was developed, it was developed for our people and our place. That's what it's designed for. All the projects we've done since, the building of the colonial style buildings, the contribution from councils at that time of their own money, the sundial that was donated by Dave Cullen, the clock by Murray Stiff, the pot on top of uh, Reavers by Wally Redwood, and the list goes up. They put their passion, but they put the people behind them. All the projects we've done today, the walkway, the art trail, the bridges, the walk the expanded walkway to Kevin, we've kept the rate cars on site. And the rate cars are supported every bit we've done. The walk and way stop it. And look how well that's gone. We just floated the here we are here we are uh, plan change to our inner city living down there. It's going particularly well. And so we need to deal with this and the people, let the people have the final say and let's move on because we've done some really, really good things down there. But what I want to address secondly is the cost. In the model, the last recommendation said we were going 2.8, writing off 1.7 million investment council spent on Hunter Basel today. You cannot write off 1.7 million dollars council. It's got to come from somewhere. And then increase amount here. That is irresponsible, totally irresponsible. Any council is voted for that. And if Councillor Bell quite rightly pointed out, the Council of Demon. We are struggling, we're taking projects out of our plan to hit the benchmarks we said earlier. And if we've got to continue to do that, well, that's not the way I like to see it. But just remember, that area was a place of regret for our people, our people, our place. They come first. Equally divided on this issue as community is. And I totally support what Hospital Northland comment they made in a very recent email, I think in the last couple of days, that came into council when they said this is a new proposal, it supersedes all of the previous surveys, they're totally irrelevant to the new proposals that have come forward. We need another survey of the people. To me, it's about, it's an ethical issue. It's the rights of our people to be heard and to be acknowledged. Other people might be clever enough to hear what the silent majority is saying over the clamour of the recent week. I'm not. I heard them last time three times. I can't hear the silent majority until we ask them. And this is our opportunity to ask. The referendum to me is the only way that we can move forward to an amicable outcome eventually. Somebody's going to be disappointed no matter what we do. The council's going to be slaughtered either for ma not making a decision or for not communicating, consulting, whichever way we go. So to me, the safest option is to communicate <coughs> with our community. 
I don't think we have an option. I think a decision today would be highly desirable, but it's not practical, it's not realistic, it's not fair, and it's not reasonable. To try and assess a project that has had council backing for seven years against a project that has been in the making for seven weeks, if that. Whether it's got legs, whether it's good, whether it's bad, at this point we don't have the information to come up with that decision. Personally, I don't want to knock down the regional council building. However, I would very much like to see that being incorporated as an extension into our car park to park and our loop walkway development down there. That's not my decision, that's something the community needs to tell us. And we've talked about incorporating new proposals into the long-term plan. Well, there's one there that's been there for a very long time, which a number of people in this room have supported over a very long time, and that is a better. That is something that we are really lacking in the community as well.